And we're talking through a boiler repair that happens on every boiler, regardless of make and model. But it's happened to this boiler here, this uh, valent. So the issue that they're having is the pressure keeps going up, keeps going down. And I'll tell you now, and I'll show you why it's happening. Now this will apply to every boiler out there on the market, as long as it's a combi boiler, yeah? And I'll show you how I'm gonna fix this boiler now as well. So this is the boiler in question, it's a valent. Now if you look here, it's flashing 3.2 bar. Yeah, so the pressure has gone crazy. As soon as the pressure goes up, the pressure relief valve will open, which is this pipe here terminating outside. Yeah, so that pipe right now is dripping like crazy outside. And the reason it keeps dripping is because they've left this filling loop here open. Look, you can see how dusty it is. It's been open for a long time. Yeah, that's been open for so long, it keeps putting pressure into the system. It's then gone over three bar and it's just opened the PRV. And instead of repairing it, they've just left it open. So it's just constantly filling up with water and it's just squirting it outside. And now finally, I think after a year or two, uh, the landlord has decided I want to get it fixed. So I'm definitely just gonna, I'm gonna replace the filling loop, even though potentially it may just shut off if I just close it there. But just because of the age, I'm gonna change the filling loop and I'll show you what else I'm gonna change on this boiler. So the boiler's open now. So you've got a pressure relief valve there. Now on some boilers, you can open it up and clean them. You can even do it on this boiler, but I'm not gonna open it and clean it. I'm just gonna replace it. You've got auto air vent here. You can see it's all crusty. I'm gonna replace that as well. That also can be cleaned, but for the sake of it, I'm just gonna re replace it. And then the vessel, let's have a look at the vessel. Most likely this is gonna to need to be replaced, especially on valence, yeah? So if it's got water coming out of it, it needs to be replaced. Yeah, you see it's got water in it, I'm gonna replace that as well. So that's coming out, PRV, AAV, and also the filling loop. Now these are all generic parts in combi boilers, yeah? Obviously they're all different in depending on the manufacturer, but every combi boiler will have these parts and they all have this same type of issue. So let's sort this out. So here are all the parts, you've got the vessel, PRV, automatic air vent and you've got the filling loop there that's my setup there so when you start off now with anything that you do obviously safe isolation so take the boiler off take that out there and also pop the fuse out which i'm going to do right now fuses out safe isolation checks make sure everything's dead i'm confident everything's dead so now because the boiler is the highest part in the system actually it isn't you see you've got the flow returns here from here so it means they've got a rad up there so i've got to skip what i was going to do i was literally just going to start draining the boiler but if i open up the drain drain off now then it will drain that rad as well so what i need to do is isolate the flow and return and then open up the boiler yeah so to do that let me just pull out my tool so under here is flow and return and isolate them twist this Isolate, that's off. And then this one here as well. Isolate this. So what that means now is the boiler has been isolated from this supply. Yeah, so if I drain this boiler, it won't drain anything else. Now that's done, I'm gonna drain from the filling loop, the, the drain off, which is here. Now, usually when you're draining a boiler, actually what's really important, which I forgot to do, was to put this diverter valve in mid position. So I'll do that now. I'll put the boiler back on. Boiler's back on. So on this boiler, you can put the boiler in a mid position whenever you're draining down. It would just help get a little bit more water out. But the main reason no water was coming out of here is because this vessel is full of water. Normally you put your pump on there and recharge the vessel, yeah? And that would push all the water from the boiler out. But because the vessel is full of water, I'm not gonna do that. I'm literally just gonna undo this nut and pull this vessel out. So I'm gonna start from top to bottom now. So I'll take the vessel out, then AAV, 
then PRV, and then at the end, I'll change this filling loop. So to remove the vessel on here, you've got two screws here. So take these two screws out first. The vessel is out and it weighs an absolute ton. That is very heavy, at least five, 10 kilos, I'm not sure. But the vessel's out, now we move on. Move on to pulling out this AAV. Pull out the clip like so. The system water here is filthy. And there's no, there's no, it's obvious why. It's because obviously it's been filling up continuously. And that's why it's so bad. But anyway, so put that in there. AAV's out. Always make sure this comes out with it. Now because the AAV's out, it would, it would probably breathe a bit better now. So I'm opening up the PRV and how can it drain more water out, as you can see. So I'm not gonna take the PRV off until that water stops, because otherwise it would just come through this PRV and it would just flood this area here. So it's just a waiting game now until this water here stops. So while that's draining, I'm gonna clean out the sensor there, at the back there. Might as well give that a little clean. Let's take this exhaust off first. So I've pulled the clip out here, clips here, that's been pulled out and the little harness has been pulled out. Now this should just pull out, guarantee this is going to be dirty, look at that there. Give that a few wax so I can clean it. Now, I could replace it but now I won't pay for it so I'm just going to clean it. Okay so I've put all that back together now, let's move on and remove this PRV. So you have a nut here at the bottom and do this nut. Nuts and done. Let's pull this clip out from the top. PRVs are you can see by looking at the PRV been leaking for a long long time the system is filthy so everything in the boiler has now been removed as you can see bang 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 now filling loop needs to be changed so i've turned the water off downstairs from stop cock open up taps confident that the water's off one thing i found out i just realized now i thought these are two rad pipes going up there but they're not, they're hot and cold. Because you can see here, that's connected to the hot. And you can see there, that's connected to the cold. So, I should be able to just take this out with, with no issues. No. And also, that also meant that I didn't need to isolate both of these valves here, because the boiler was the highest point. It was higher than any radiators, yeah? It would just drained all this down here. So I didn't need to isolate. But anyway, let's take these off and swap them. You see what happened there, yeah? Madness. Look at me. I'm soaked. Yeah. Luckily, nothing went on the floor. I'd have to clean this in a bit. But it's not too bad. So basically, when I when I undone that, what I forgot, I overlooked it, is the fact that I closed both of them up. So now the pressure was on these pipes. Yeah, so I didn't relieve the pressure, essentially. And as I took it off, it just squirted straight at me. Anyway, I've sorted that out, I've cleaned it as best as I can, I'll sort this out right at the end. Now I'm going to, I've turned a new um, filling loop, 
I'll f t turn the water back on, make sure we've got no leaks, and then remove back in reverse order. So PRV, then bam, bam, bam. PRV, all lubed up, ready to go back in. Clip back in, and then I'll do the nut now at the bottom of the boiler. That'll be sorted. AV's all lubed up, ready to go back in. So push at the back, push. So now I've just got to get the expansion vessel back in. So whenever I fit vessels, I'll always recharge it. I've always found that it's never about one bar. It's always like 0.5 or 0.3. Let's whack a bit of silicon grease there. And I haven't connected it, yeah? So the air should be able to pump straight back up. Let's have a look. Have a look there. Zero. Always recharge the vessels. Vessels charged. Take that off. So now I believe we've put everything back together. I actually need to put that nut back together there. So I've got to find that washer, put that nut back together. So it's all been put back together. Now I need to Turn the power back on, and I've got them to isolate there, so I've got to sort that out. Have a look at this. I've not put no water in the boiler, but it's showing 2.6 bar. It's either that pressure sensor there is faulty, or because I've put a new vessel in, it's actually the pressure that is showing the, the correct pressure. We'll have a look by draining it down. So there's no point looking at it while it's drained down because I can just look at the annual gauge. That's showing zero. That there is still slightly blocked. Let me see if I can do something. It shouldn't be showing 2.6. Okay, so I've had to change that sensor there in the back. Uh, I think what had happened is because it had been sitting at three bar for so long, maybe a year, two years, the guy goes, he's had this issue. I think it's just, it's just, permanently stuck in that position now so even if i cleaned it it was the same thing but now you can see the new ones in yeah zero zero that's fine pressure's on zero i've got it into filling mode now anyway let me make sure no i haven't let's put it into filling mode so press them both together bam Let the system fill up now. System's now full up, put it into purging mode, which what it does, it pushes the pump one way, pushes the pump the other way, and it kind of gets rid of all the air in the system. What's this error code here? F75, reset F75, do it again. So deaeration is done and I've put it into P01. So P01 is now maximum mode, putting the heating on max, make sure nothing leaks. I do my FJ checks now, my fluid gas analysis to make sure it's all working safe. And then I'll give you a catch up right at the end. So job's done, um, heating test is done. So when it was on max, it only went up to about 2.1 bar. So the vessel is doing its job now. No leaks inside, as you can see. So I'm happy with that. Customer said that they'd clean all of this up. Should we clean as engineers? Yes, we should. Customer said they'd sort that out. So essentially this repair could have been carried out on any boiler. So any combi boiler, they all have the same parts. They still, they have a vessel, 
PRV, AAV. So always look into these things whenever you see the PRV is dripping, check the vessel, then check the AAV, check filling loop, you know? And then other things which are unforeseen, like for example, the, the low water pressure sensor as well, that had to be changed as well.